Hey y'all, welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles where I document extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. Paul Chatlin fits that description to a T. He is a WFPB in the first degree, a whole foods plant-based hero in my book, an animal lover, a health activist and advocate who is shaking things up out there in the health and wellness industry in a major way. I am so grateful to have Paul on the show and not to mention he's one of the funniest vegans I've ever met probably the funniest vegan. So he's the founder of plant-based nutrition support group, pbnsg.org, the largest plant-based support group in the world. It is a nonprofit group offering training events, outreach programs, plant-based supermarket and restaurant tours, outings, and so much fun. He is such an incredible inspiration to me and to so many. Paul, thank you so much for being here. How are you? You know, I'm doing great, and uh, I, I'm speechless. How about that? That doesn't happen too often to me, but that was a great intro. In fact, can you tape record that? I'd like to take that with me everywhere I go. Well, you're lucky it's been recorded, so <laughs> okay. you can edit that little snippet and carry it with you wherever you go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You're so amazing. I am so glad you're here because your journey to health is such an awesome tale. It's a, it's a real live tale. And it's, it's awesome. You were scheduled for heart surgery and given one other option to work with Dr. Esselstyn. What is really going on? What happened next? Well, um, about four years ago, I woke up with severe angina. And I was, you know, thinking, gosh, you know, I work out a lot. And how, what's, what is this? I'm not sure. You know, I really need to take you back a little bit further. As a Please. young kid growing up, um, my dad had three brothers, and all three of them, including my father, all had bypass surgery in their 50s, and two of them never made it. One of them was never the same, and it was the only time I actually saw my father cry, and he cried for three days after the surgery, and that was the memory I had as a young person. So when I turned 50 years old, I announced to my family, and I've got three sons, that I was going to give up certain things. I was giving up meat. Uh, I was going to from whole milk to half percent. I was going to make some other changes, just, you know, be kinder to people, a lot of other great things. And then I find out, oh, and I gave up um, all the other oils for olive oil because they said it was the good oil, right? So here I am now, it's, you know, three, four years continue now, I'm 54, 55, and I started having this uh, real pain, chest pain, and trust me, it's a pain that people just don't want to have it it's not fun it's not a fun pain it's a hurt pain yeah and it hurt me and i was feeling miserable but i didn't want to worry my wife or anybody so i'd wake up and i hated waking up and for about two and a half three months you know i just didn't want to wake up and i could could not walk more than 20 steps without stopping and finally one day i said you know what i better go to my doctor so it, that's when it started i went to my doctor and he heard a heart murmur that he had not heard before so with that he said i got to get you over to a heart specialist I live in Michigan, and there's a handful of, you know, good hospitals. So I went to the hospital that he asked me to, to go to. They did some tests, and they could not find out what the problem was. So they were scheduling a heart biopsy and a heart catheter, but my heart doctor said that he thought I would probably need some bypass, or he was seeing some hardening of the heart itself, and he thought that maybe I might need a new heart. You know, he was putting a lot of scare into me. Wow. So. I finally realized I better tell my wife because she needs to know about this. I just didn't want to worry her. So when I told her, she kind of thunked me on the head because we're a team and I didn't play. I wasn't a good teammate, you know, Aww. and uh, she um, she works for a company that their owner had a lung replacement done at the Cleveland Clinic. Ooh. So when she was done crying after hearing about what happened to me, he went up to her and said, what's going on? She explained it. He made a few calls, and he got me into the Cleveland Clinic in about three weeks. Wow. That doesn't happen. You know, if you went, if you were anybody and you say, listen, I want to go to the Cleveland Clinic, it could take a year. Right. You know, it could take some time. So I uh, told the people at the hospital here locally that I wanted to get a second opinion. I went to the Cleveland Clinic. Now, here's where it gets kind of crazy. They got, a th you know, they got hundreds and hundreds of cardiologists there. It's, you know, it's the heart place, the place you go to for heart disease. Right. And they assigned me a doctor, and it just turned out that his mentor in med school was Caldwell Esselstyn. Wow. So 
they did the heart catheter and they discovered that I had a 100% block on my right side, two other arteries at 65%. And when they give you the heart catheter and prep you for the biopsy, they're also prepping you for surgery. Yeah. So I was all ready to go. They had me in the gurney. They said, yep, we're blocked. We, we, you know, the anesthesiologist said, should we get them ready for surgery? And that's when the moment came. My doctor looked at me and said, would you be interested in, a, in an option other than surgery? And I'm like, I'll do anything. Wow. I, I really will. Because, again, I saw what happened to my dad and my uncles. I've got three sons. I realized this has got to stop. You know, and I'm just crazy enough to try almost anything. Good. So I, here we are. It's 930 at night at the Cleveland Clinic. And my doctor's on the phone with Caldwell Esselstyn. The fact that Dr. Esselstyn picked up at 930, that was a miracle. So it was real simple. He hands me the phone. And I hear Dr. Esselstyn say, Paul, this is Dr. Esselstyn. Why don't you just go on home and I'll give you a call in the morning. Sure enough, the next morning we spoke for a good hour, hour and a half. Uh, I went and uh, bought the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. I read it when I was done two days later, called him up, and I gutted everything out of my house, gave it to charity, and I have been plant, what they call plant, I call it plant perfect ever since, which means all, all I've had is fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains for four years. Wow. And, um... Let me say a couple things about it. First, I never realized how much bad stuff is in the food I was eating. Now, I didn't know it back then, okay? But I just could not believe all the sneaky names they have for oil and sugar and everything else. And that's wrong. Uh, secondly, I, at that moment, my cholesterol was 347. And I weighed 200, almost 220 pounds. Oh my gosh. So after going plant-based for, you know, the first six months, my cholesterol dropped to 127, which is about where it is today. Uh, I, my weight dropped to right, to 160 pounds, which I've built back up over the last three years by working out a lot. Uh, you look good, honey. You look good. Well, you know, it's hard, it's hard work. You know, mind, body, soul. That's what it is. That's right. And, um, but, you know, so, so in my convalescence, you know, I really, I was bedridden for the first three months. I also had not only blocked arteries, but I had an enlarged heart I had a left bundle block. You know, I was a, I had leaky valves. So what they wanted me to do is really three months of bed rest, and they put me on some crazy pills, and I was sleeping 16, 18 hours. Whoa. And the only other time I'd get up is to eat, and then I would be looking at cookbooks and trying to figure out what plant-based food can I cook. So I guess the second thing I would say that's most important to anybody is you got to get your head on straight for this type of change. You really do. It's it's it's. You know, there was a moment I remember looking outside going, gosh, is this the rest of my life? Do I just sleep all day and then cook and then go to bed? And, I, you know, I was like, this isn't much of a quality of life. That's right. And then I realized something. I needed to keep things simple, and I needed to realize that food was not the center of my life. You know, us growing up, how we grew up, food was a huge part of my life. And oh, everything yeah. revolved around lunch, breakfast, and, and, and dinner. And, uh, you know, what are you going to have for this? And I'll meet you there. And now, it, you know, it's like I need to eat to survive, but it's what I do when I'm not eating that's most important. So I love that uh, you're talking yeah. about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. But, but, but you, I needed to get my arms around it because I was going to a very dark place in, in, in my convalescence, you know. But, but when I got out of it, I said, I need to give something back. In fact, when I was on that gurney, I remember saying, gosh, you know, if you've got if, if you could – you know, whether I believe or not, I said, if you could just save me out of this one, trust me, I've asked a lot of him over the 50 plus years to get me out of situations. I said, I will give something back. So in my convalescence, uh, after uh, they diagnosed what I had and they were trying to get me to my heart to shrink so the valves wouldn't work as hard, I thought to myself, I need to take a cooking class. So I went to the Esselstyn's cooking class, paid whatever I paid. Uh, paid a little bit much, but uh, it was well worth it, and I got to hang out with them and the uh, and Anne and, and, and Dr. Esselstyn, so that was a great moment. And uh, I, I thought, you know what, I want to take this, and I want the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield to pay for it. So I submitted it and got rejected. And I thought, wow, that's my calling right there. I'm going after Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I'm going to convince them to put a pay code, kind of like Dean Ornish did, yes. but I'm, I'm Paul. I'm not a Dr. Dean Ornish. I'm just... Paul, I'm not, you're nobody, of blue life. collar Paul, it's nobody special Paul, well, trust me. Well, somebody but, very special Paul. Well, so I, I, I started fighting Blue Cross Blue Shield, I got to the highest level I could, and they said, 
the only way they'll make a change, you have to work with the legislature because they're tied into the legislature of Michigan. So I realized right then that wasn't going to happen. So I said, you know what I'll do? I'm going to do a, a transition class at my house, and, and I'm going to do 20 people every month for the rest of my life. That's what I'll do. So we had one class. You know, I put it in a little a $25 ad in the paper. We had 20 people show up, wow. and it was a great class. So I thought, wow, if 20 people were interested, maybe I need to not be selfish, and maybe I need to give a little bit bigger in the community. So I said, but before I do that, I need to get a partner to do, do this with me. I can't do this alone because I'm not a doctor. So I called the three major hospitals, and I said, and I, and I finally got in touch with all the heads of cardiology, and I said, give me three names of people who are more on the holistic side of cardiology than bloodthirsty surgeons who just want to cut people up. And they gave me three names. One name was repeated. It was Dr. Joel Kahn. I will say that there's a couple of other great holistic doctors here in Michigan. There's not enough doctors. Really, there's only like two or three general practitioners and one or two or, two or three cardiologists. We need more people. We need a lot more. But... Uh, I met Joel, Dr. Khan, and uh, he uh, was amazing. You know, he's brilliant. He was entertaining. He was passionate. And I asked him if together we could start doing maybe some open houses for whole food plant-based education. Wow. So we got a place at the Beaumont Hospital, and uh, we put another advertisement in the local paper. We thought maybe 20, 30, 40 people would show. We had 123 wow. at our first meeting. and. The next, then we said, we'll do it again the following month. We had a little bit, 140 or so. And then two days before our third meeting, Beaumont kicks us out. Hmm, why was that, I wonder? Because people were actually getting better without paying money to them for yeah, their, there was, their body there was something parts going on. and giving yeah, them pharmaceutical drugs. They yeah, were actually getting was, better. Yeah, they didn't like the competition. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I was heard, thankful for I've the two months they gave like me. That. Yeah. You know, and uh, wow. so we, so we, I started looking around and the Birmingham schools, I want to say that because they opened up their doors and their heart to me. And uh, we've been having meetings every month for the last, and we're going to have our third year birthday celebration uh, on February when Rip Esselstyn comes to talk uh, to our group. So, wow. uh, we, yeah, in less than three years, we've got about 3,000, about 78 members right now, something like that, almost 3,100 members. Congrats, Paul. Oh, Truly thanks, thanks. amazing, amazing. Well, but actually, you know, Ab, yeah, go on. Sorry. From my Sorry. side, I, I'm proud of the fact that we have this big organization, and I'm very proud of that. However, actually, it makes me kind of sad because it just keeps telling me that people are looking for answers and they'll go anywhere for answers. The key is they're not getting it from their doctors. Yes. Right? So, to that end, to that end, you know, um, we are going to start in, as an organization. We're going to be announcing it in February, our third year birthday, something called Doctors Teaching Doctors. Now, it's not all of what we're doing, but it's this year the most important thing we're doing, which is we are going to go to any doctor's office that wants to bring a group of people together to learn about plant-based nutrition. More importantly, we have a couple of plant-based doctors who are willing to teach other doctors. So the pitch here is... We're going to empower all of our members to go to their doctors, ask them to invest in them, the patient, because they've been investing in the doctor for their whole lives. Right. And if a doctor says, hey, listen, I didn't learn it in school, we're going to give them an opportunity to get rid of that excuse, come to a place where other doctors will teach it. It won't be for, it'll just be an hour. We're going to try and get CME credit, which is continuing medica medical education credit. Education. Yeah, medication, I like which it. is very important. You Put can that down that. in your bylaws. Yep, yeah, I'm gifting it. I'm gifting it. TM. <laughs> and, um, and, and, we, and and if the doctor says, no, I'm not interested, what does it say about your doctor? Right. Like, I'm going to go to my doctor. I've had him for 30 years. I've given him tens of thousands of dollars. I've spent hundreds of hours, you know, off and on over the period of time. I'm going to say to him, I need you to learn this, teach it to your, your patients. If he says, I don't have the time, then guess what? I'm going to go find a doctor who does. Good for you. That's the plan. I'm not changing my mind. And if my doctor doesn't do it in the next six months, Paul's going to have a new doctor. Good for you. Paul, I support you so much. And you actually said one of the most logical things I've heard anyone say in years on your upcoming movie, which I will tell everybody about. You can see Paul's handsome mug in the film yeah. Eating You Alive. So in, in the film Eating You Alive, 
you said um, that you brought your beautiful, amazing angel dog, Sophie, into the vet, who I love, Sophie. And, you know, every time you take her into the vet, the first question your vet asks is, what are you feeding your dog? And you said, this is a question in the 30 plus years you've been going to your doctor that you have never once been asked. Not once. You go to the vet, the vet has asked, what is your dog eating? From there, we can figure out how to heal your dog's issues. You go to the doctor and that's never once been asked. What is the disconnect? What is going on? I, I love that you pointed that out. I mean, it's so well said and I've experienced the same thing. Well, I, I appreciate that and, and to me, it's like, um, I, listen, we, we need to educate every person in the United States. We need to share with them exactly what the benefits are. And then they can make their own decision. They still want the meat or they still want the dairy. They're adults. They can make their own choices. But when they go to their doctor under the Hippocratic Oath that the doctor signs, and I'm going to let you know that one of the things they talk about is that prevention is worth more than cure. You know, or if they're not sure of something, they'll seek out help from other doctors. My point here is that as a society, we're unfortunately, most of us like me, and I'm no better, I go to my doctor when I'm not feeling well. I trust him that he's going to help me get better. My doctor doesn't ever ask me about what I'm eating or my lifestyle. What he says is, here's a script. If that doesn't work, call me in two days. I'll get you a stronger script. And it continues and it continues. And guess what happens? When the scripts run out, now it's procedure time. Yeah. And it just doesn't have to be this way. No. And that's where I we hold them at the highest level. They don't look they don't return it to us. Now I'm hoping with doctors teaching doctors, we're gonna hold them a little bit more accountable because let's face it, oh, man. we've spent eight eight years I, I, I couldn't do it myself, go to med school. I respect them top to bottom. But at the end of the day, they owe us a better life. That's right, honey. Wow. Doctors need to start writing recipes on their script pads. I want doctors to start writing down recipes for their patients, not prescriptions. Can we yes. vote for that? That's yeah. what you and I both vote for. And that's what you're doing with doctors teaching doctors. Is that what it's called? Doctors yeah. teaching doctors. I, that, I salute you for doing that, Paul. You are a Thank brave you. hero for taking that on. I mean, truly, I'd like to be part of that educational process. Uh, yes, I'm on, I'm on board, I'm on board. And you know, I wanna, I wanna touch on something you said before in your journey on the gurney. Um, Ooh, I, I like <laughs> I'm giving you so many little plugs for your, for Wait, your that business. That was so good. I'm journey like, on the gurney, medicate. Down. That was a good one. Medicate, med, medicate, medicate instead of medicate. We yeah. need to educate instead of medicate. And you need to vegetate the world. Um, but your journey on the gurney, you said that when Dr. Esselstyn, I, I believe you were saying his protocol for you was to lay in bed for three weeks while they were figuring out how to heal your angina through just a diet and life, a lifestyle change. But you said you were taking all kinds of supplements or drugs. What were well, you? Well, no, what, what I was saying is that when. It wasn't just that I had a, uh, a blocked, you know, one blocked artery and two at 65. I had an enlarged heart. I had the hardening of the artery, left one to block, heart murmur, a valve, leaky valve. So the only thing that they were really worried about was the enlarged heart. The enlarged heart, the only way to shrink it is I had to stop exercising. I had to just stop. I had to get bedridden. And what it did over a period of actually three months was over time, it just shrunk the heart because I wasn't building the muscle up anymore. That's right. And by doing that, by shrinking the heart, the demand on the valves lessened and the valves stopped leaking. So I've had no surgery four years later after they were ready to gurney me into a triple bypass surgery. See that? And all I know that is it's been four years, no surgery. I'm just one guy. What, why isn't everyone like that? And, you know, then you find out later as like in our organization, um, we were just a heart disease organization. And then I started realizing this diet really helps type 2 diabetes. Every it helps certain, certain forms of cancer. It's the best weight loss program that I have known to man. It, it right. is the best because it's sustainable and you're not starving all the time. Oprah, what are you doing? That's right. Okay. Yeah. But my point is, is that, um, you know, I, now this whole food plant-based benefits so many other diseases. Why, why don't 
Why doesn't the world know about it? That's you know what? the it's point. It's astounding to me the hypocrisy that goes on out there, honestly. I mean, my friend actually told me that he recently attended. He is a vegan. We were both educated at Hippocrates Health Institute together. He attended a black tie gala for the American Heart Association, expecting them to be relaying the science that's out there from Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, uh, the Hippocrates Health Institute, research that you have compiled. So many people, doctors, scientists have compiled that is out there. And he was at the American Heart Association Black Tie Gala at the Ritz, and they were serving shellfish for appetizers and steak for dinner. And then doing the big ask, like, we need more funding for research about how to cure the number one killer. Well, the number one killer is Western medicine. But the number two killer of life in the Western world, heart disease, stroke, heart attack. We need your money. Really? Okay. How about you take that money and enroll in Dr. Esselstyn's courses because you need to learn not to serve shellfish and steak at your gala. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's unbelievable and it starts from the top. But I do love that the, the uh, I guess he, I, I think he's still the president of the Heart Association. You're thinking of Kim Williams? Yes. Didn't yeah, now he, he he is now not the president. Not anymore. He, his, his, he just retired or that just one retired. year ended. But in fact, he's going to be here speaking to PBMSG wow. in March. Yay, everybody! Everybody, yeah. fly to Michigan. Maybe I can make it. He's so amazing. I and I love his quote. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could put ourselves out of business? He's the he was the president of the American Heart Association and yeah. the head well, of, the head of cardiology. He, yeah, I think he's the, the head cardiologist of the American, American Heart Association. Cardiology Association. Cardiology or Association. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Something like that. Yeah, and I love that quote. It's like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could put ourselves out of business? And he's a vegan. Well, yeah. well, Kim, you can put yourself out of business, and and he knows that, and he said it, and he's one of our heroes. So you yeah. know, when you ask what the heck is going on, when I ask what the heck is going on, well, it starts from the top, and thank God we have people like you getting these groups together, organizing, having knowledgeable experts, scientists, doctors, health educators, conscious comedians, um, educating and presenting at your groups. And, and they're huge. They're huge events, and they're affecting thousands of lives. So it's people like you, Kim Williams, Dr. Kim Williams, that are actually blowing the whistle here. Like, yeah, what is going on? I mean, well, you know what? You could you could let people know too. We just finished a couple of things I could share about PBNSG. One is we finished writing up. You know, when I started the let's start a support group, I started writing notes down every day, and we just finished penning eighty plus pages of how to start a plant based nutrition support group. Wow! Because what I realized was I would never want somebody to go through what I went through because I really felt I was on a desert island for two years wow. or a year and a half. So at least now it's written. If somebody wants to uh, take a look at it, they could reach me at paul at the letters pbnsg.org. Okay. And we could get that out to them. That's number one. Number two is we completed this past year with the help of 14 wonderful first and second year medical school students uh, medical course material. So, so the backdrop of this is, I met somebody. Her name is Amanda Martin, first year student. She could not believe that nutrition wasn't being taught at medical school. Her and I connected, like we're connecting. Uh, it was love at first sight, just like you and me. And together, we said, let's do something. So we decided to write up a curriculum. Now, what we realized in talking to the schools is that every curriculum takes maybe two to three years to kind of vet out to make a change. Yeah. We don't have time for that because every single day, another person's getting pills or procedures when it, they don't have to. Yeah. So what we came up with the idea is let's just add information to current curriculums. So we did it and we've, wow. we've completed nine systems of the body. Each one has its own infographic and we presented it to the medical school here. They're actually using parts of it this year they're going to vote on it in September, and if they say if they want to add it to their curriculum, then it could be a possible world change, paradigm change, something big. Of course. Um, so, so that way, at least that way, all the young people going to med school will learn a little bit about nutrition. Where today they're learning nothing. Ah, uh, so, yes. Yep. So it's it's and then this past year we had the uh, the honor 
I'm doing a lot of workside wellness with General Motors. Wow. And the point is, is that we need to do more of this. Now, of course, it's you know very resource heavy, but the point here is that you know we, we need to get involved in businesses and teach them that they can be healthy, and if they're healthy, their energy's up, and if there's energy up, they're creative, and if they're creative, they're successful, and they can beat the competition across the pond. You know, America would be great again by being healthier. That's right. That's part, that's part of the so. So we've got a lot of big initiatives, be it doctor, doctors, teaching doctors, medical course material, how to start a plant-based group. Um, but we could use help. We could always use funding, okay, to be honest, because this has been riding on the my retirement for, uh, you know, of course, my wife's not too thrilled about that. But whatever I put aside from retirement, I put back into PBNSG because, really, it gave me a new life. You know, I mean, I did not want to be a bypass person. I didn't want it. I saw what it did to my dad. I don't want it because I know me. Um, I would probably just keep eating bad food in ten years. I'd have another bypass. Yeah. I don't want to live that life, you know. And uh, good for today you. I, yeah. Seriously, good for you for taking a stand yeah. for yourself, for your health, for your life, for your sons, for the future. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Some people yeah. just give in to their addictions their entire lives, and it is an addiction. And I do have huge empathy because I was an addict too to this food before I went to twelve steps and got sober from this food. But yeah, and, and, and you don't realize the, there's certain proteins that you eat from the food that kind of just put themselves right in your brain. And, you know, even to this day, I mean, you know, sure, I'd love to still have a pizza. I, I mean, like a real pepperoni pizza. I grew up on it, okay? It was my, my food of choice. You know, I, I loved it as much as I loved anything. Yeah. Four years later, I kind of still would like to have it once in a while. But guess what? I don't. And it's because I know the education side and I made a choice. And the fact is, with this medical course material, here's about the biggest point about that, which is I think I hope people will listen to. Was you know I love animals, okay, and I love my dog, and I don't understand how people could love dogs and kill other animals. I just I, I don't get it, okay. Yeah, species. I'm not species. I was a yeah, yeah I was a meat eater. Speciesism. Yeah, I mean Racism. I just I was a meat eater, so I mean I I stopped because I I've got, I love my dog, but the point here is if we could get doctors future doctors and current doctors to prescribe nutrition before pills and procedures because humans are kind of the selfish animal we will be able to just save animals and if we save animals we'll save the planet that's right because think about it what they do today in this world we live in is they put bad stuff in the ground and they feed it to those animals now the animals are living in the most deplorable conditions but to keep them alive they put things in the animals so they feed them bad things, and they put things in the animals, and they put it all together, and they give it to us. Yes, we're eating and we're, sick and we're flesh. Eating it. We're eating yes. sick, cancer-ridden, disease-ridden flesh of tortured animals with a ton of fight-or-flight hormones from living in hell and then being murdered hellishly. So we are eating that karma. Forget. I mean, yes, it is that karma. It is that energy, but it also it affects us physically. How could it not? Emotionally, mentally, physically. Read the World Peace Diet, everybody, if you want more information about that. Um, Dr. Mark Beckoff, who's going to be on the show in a few days, extensive writing about that kind of thing um, with Jane Goodall. He works. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. We are what we eat. Uh, we are what – we become what we eat, mind, body, soul. I have an aerial tattoo on my hand, by the way. It's from a carnival. I know it's probably really bad. Hold on. Hold on. Really, I really want bad here. <laughs> I'm like, by the way, I went to a carnival. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I don't eat mermaids. I don't eat any of her relatives from the sea either. Um, could you, before we, could you please, it's funny that you mentioned the pizza. Yes, darling, you're in the Midwest. It's very close to Chicago. Deep Dish is your middle name. I know. So it's got to be hard. I was actually going to ask you that question, but you answered it. Like, don't you feel like you're missing out? Aren't you bummed when there's the... The office pizza party, and you can't eat any of that crap. Like, do you? No, you, you know feel? what? It's it's like to me, it's more of a sense of pride. Like, like you know, I'll do things to make my life easier. For example, if the family wants to go out to dinner here in Michigan or around the plant based nutrition support group, we've got some twenty one restaurants that we can go to today. Wow! That you could just say, "I want your plant based menu." Wow! And they'll give you three items that we could choose. And, uh, and we can have, like this weekend, I went to a really great restaurant, I got their plant-based menu, and I, I made a selection, it was awesome. So, Go Michigan. So, 
Yeah, don't I mean, so call because I know that, to, yeah. that I know that's one of your expertise is getting restaurants to become plant based. Way to change the world, babe. Yeah, well, you know what? It's it, you, to everyone listening. It's it's as simple as you go in and you say, I, you look at their menu because chances are there's enough whole food plant based stuff that they could put together. And you know, when you're a plant based person like I am, you understand about combinations and, and how you can put things together. Yes. So you go to them and just say. If you could give me three items and you just list them out, you already got the ingredients, give me a price, give me your logo, we'll put it on our website and promote it to our organization. Wow. So that's one thing. You know, to, to be successful, it isn't just restaurants. So we need to have, we have transition 101 and advanced transition classes. Nice. So if somebody is plant curious and they heard about us, we try to convince them to come into a, a meeting, there's no charge, and they can learn about the beginnings of what the benefits are of whole food plant-based lifestyle amazing well yep. how come oil is not on that menu just curious um, i oil, know oil is, but... yeah oil is uh oil is actually is interesting about oil it's like it seems like that's the last thing people are willing to give up yeah it was but, the last thing but, i i gave up right it's and it's a tough one but at the end of the day you look at a teaspoon and it's 150 calories of pure fat yeah pure fat and then when you think about it, you look at the cans that you eat and all the other food you eat in a day, you're probably doing a couple thousand calories that you may not even know about. I remember when uh, they came out. You remember when they came out with the oil in a plate with spices and bread? No. Okay, I well, maybe that's just a Michigan thing. <laughs> but they would give you this fresh bread, and then they drizzle oil on a plate with all funky spices. And it was like, leave the oil, I'll just finish the oil because it tasted so good. Oh, my gosh. And, yep. and I mean, it was like, game on, let's eat, you know. <laughs> um, but now you find out that it, what it does to the endothelial cell, you know, it coats it, it doesn't allow it to do its healing job. And, um, you know, the funny thing is about oil, too, is that people, all you have to do is, guess what, just stir a little faster. Okay, you can replace it with vegetable broth, wine, water, you can slowly... Uh, 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 do your onions slow, you know, really slow. Definitely. And it works the same as oil without wasting all these calories and hurting your heart. Right. And so, oil, yeah, it suffocates oxygen. The goal is to be oxygenated and yeah. have, that's why everybody's always talking about antioxidants. You don't, you want to eat antioxidants, which means not oxidizing our oxygenated bodies. Oil suffocates oxygen. So right. no disease can live in an oxygenated body. If you want disease, eat oil. It'll suffocate your oxygen and allow disease to breathe. Not to mention, like Paul already experienced in his life, even after he gave up meat at age 50, his arteries were still getting more and more clogged because he was eating olive oil, like it was going out yes. of style. So yes, I was you, drinking it straight. Drinking it, right, lapping yeah. it up with those spices on the plate, <laughs> even without the bread. So yeah. Paul Hello. experienced okay. it firsthand. But, uh, yeah. You know, the, the good news, though, is that, you know, we have figured out how to bring a community together here in the, you know, in the counties of Oakland, Macomb, Washington, Wayne counties. Uh, we just opened up some small groups in Saginaw and Windsor and Grand wow. Rapids. Wow. So, you know, the goal here is to get this whole state on a whole food plant-based diet. And uh, we've got now, I think, 16 or 17 small groups. Wow. And that's where, you know, 10 to 30 people will show up at someone's house once a month. And they, you know, they may start with a potluck dinner or they may do a Q and a or they may bring a speaker in, but it's on a smaller scale. So you got to have transition classes. You got to have a place that they can go that's a safe house or safe place. And then we bring in the big speakers every single month as wow. often as we can. So where it's, it's, it's like um, auditoriums, like school auditoriums. Yeah. We, we Birmingham high school seats about, uh, about 1,100 people. So we get anywhere from, you know, three, 400 to up to 800, 900, depending on the speaker. Uh, so, it, you know, it varies every single month. But the important thing is that we're teaching. We're teaching, teaching. It's all about educating. And uh, we're hoping that, you know, if, if a grandma shows up, they bring their grandchildren. You know, this, yeah. this month we're going to have three little kids who are going to be up on stage because they're whole food plant based. Oh. And I want, I want the, the group to see that it doesn't have to, you don't have to wait to be sick to try it. That's you should it. do it now. That's you should it. do it right now. Amen, my brother. You are yeah. so amazing and you speak such wisdom, Paul. And you're hilarious. I mean, well, we didn't really get a chance to, to 
do our little comedy routines back and forth today because we had way too much more serious stuff to talk about. But no, seriously, thank you so much for being a light, a beacon of truth about health in this planet, on this planet, in this world. You've helped thousands of people. You are one of my real life inspirations, truly. I am so grateful. So again, if you want to check out Paul's incredible, biggest plant-based nutrition support group in the world, you can check it out at www.pbmsg.org. You know, interesting about that, I used to have pride when I'd say it was www.plantbasednutritionsupportgroup.org. I figured if people were willing to write it, they'd love us. But then everyone calls it, I'm tired of writing it. So we, we made it small. It's, it's www.pbnsg.org. And we welcome all of you. By the way, one thing I'm very proud of, take a look. We've got, I think, the greatest selection of recipes, whole food, plant-based, wow. from plant strong to plant perfect, I've ever seen. We've got something like uh, plant-based five and dime, so you know recipes that are five minutes, five dollars, five ingredients. Wow. And the same with ten, ten, and ten. And then we have indulgences, breakfast, lunch, dinners, and sauces. You know, we've got we've got a wonderful culinary curator, Denise Kling Beltro, and we've got like thirteen or fourteen chefs. We don't have the biggest names in the world, but we may have the best chefs in the world. These are just chefs you don't hear about that we promote on the website. So everyone is welcome to just be a member and uh, and learn. Please, just let's learn about it. And then if you think you know about it, tell a friend and then tell your family. Oh, my gosh, Paul, thank you. It's so hard to find really great oil-free, sugar-free, plant-perfect um, right recipes. Got, oh, my yeah. gosh, P B nsg.org go check out their recipes it is truly an amazing website i'm so proud of what you've done Thanks. looking at your website i know that your curriculum for medical schools is going to just be so successful and i am so grateful that you're taking the torch and doing this because it really needs to be done so what's right is right you know at the end of the day right. it just you know what I, I don't i'm not into the politics i'm not into you know like worrying about all this it's right. If it's right, you do it. Like That's the criminalization it. of talking smack about food. We won't even go there. That's another video. Yeah. The That's laws that have been passed to make it illegal to talk about food publicly, unless you're a doctor or a nutritionist, don't even get me started. Okay? If I need to be shackled and carried off to the pen <laughs> because I'm talking the truth, then you and I will bunk together. All right? Yeah. But no, you're so amazing. Again, please check out Paul's website. You'll be so inspired, just like I am, by what he's doing in this world. Honey, we've got 60,000 miles of blood vessels in our bodies. Be good to them. Right. Be good to them. That's right. Feed and nourish your beautiful, loving hearts so that they get big with love, not big with angina. Um, I don't know if angina makes the heart big, but I wanted to correlate. But, yeah, make your I'm hearts. I'm working it. It's, well, you know, it's, it's right. I'll, I'll say it's right because you're giving the interview, okay? Yeah. Make your hearts big with love and, and truth and honesty and health and spread the good word. Plant-based nutritional support group.org. Paul, how do you even pronounce your last name? It's Chatlin. Chatlin, that's what I thought. C-H-A-T-L-I-N. Okay, that's how yeah. I pronounced it. Paul Chatlin. Head of the biggest nutritional support group in the world, plant-based nutritional support group. Do you have anything else you want to leave our viewers with today, Paul? You know what? I mean, listen, you know, I used to think that everyone should just make the change quickly. And I realized that, you know, it's like a, like I look at it like a swimming pool. You know, some people jump in and some people just need to put a thing, you know, a little toe and then maybe their leg. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if you make little changes, they're going to make big changes to your doctor and your health. So if you try some things like give up meat or give up dairy, give something up that is hurting you and see what happens. Make sure to baseline when you start. Always baseline so you know what you're dealing with. But you'll find out, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 50s, so I'm a product of the 60s or actually the 70s. Um, the best energy drug I've ever been on is called plant-based nutrition. Um, it is. I just I feel good every day. I can work out every single day. I don't feel sore the next day. So, I mean, it feels good. And I'd rather feel healthy than full. Amen. Paul, right. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank Words. you. Thank you so much. And I hope we can do it again someday. Oh, we will. We have so many more topics to cover, darling. We've just begun. This was just I like it. 
This is just the broad stroke. You're so <laughs> amazing. Keep spreading the good word. And thank you so, so much for being here today with us on Humanitarian Chronicles. You are truly a humanitarian that needs to be chronicled. So I'm grateful. Thank you for your time and your I'm love honored, thank you. and supporting the good cause. We will see you again soon. Subscribe. Bye. Like it. Bye. We choose health. We choose health. Green health.